So when you, when you look through your packet and you look at <coughs> the side by side on page 11, you start looking at all of the different changes or how we are going to just adopt the governor's plan. And what we are doing uh, when you get to uh, instances like income, we're already talking about the brackets being different and that brings in different dollars. When you talk about looking at uh, what we're doing for meals, that's a different change. That's going to bring in different dollars. When you start looking at sales tax, we've reduced it by 15%. You know, we're keeping it at 5.5%. We've reduced, you know, a, the most regressive tax, the sales tax on Maine people by 15%. The governor believes that it should be at 6.5%. We reject that. We said it should be at 5.5%. So when you go through the entire slate of moving parts, we have the dollars to pay for our deal, and we feel that it's targeted towards Maine's middle class. When you look at that same side-by-side, -side, gentlemen, after all your criticism of the governor, sales tax base adopts the LePage plan, sales, ta fair sales tax fairness credit adopts the LePage plan, property tax fairness credit adopts the LePage plan. This sounds more like the opening gambit for negotiations than a final plan by your side. I think, Mal, you hit it on the head. And this is uh, a, a counter proposal that, um, that demonstrates that we are at the table negotiating this. There are elements of the governor's plan that we agree with and that we're adopting. And this is in the spirit <coughs> of trying to get to an end game that we can all agree on. We felt like uh, this debate has been one-sided. The governor has been out there with his proposal, and uh, we couldn't sit on the sidelines and, and not join it. So we're joining it in a way that puts the emphasis and the focus and the priority on the middle class, how we think we're going to grow our economy. Uh, we pay for it. Uh, we pay for it now into the future, and we also invest in things like uh, schools, roads, bridges, and our workforce. One of, the, one of the big differences between these two plans is the corporate income tax rate. The governor has obviously made that a major part of this platform saying we need to lower taxes to draw more businesses, keep more businesses here. This, uh, your, your plan doesn't cut the rate at all. Can you talk about that? So uh, once again, you know, if you look at one isolated tax, uh, you know, you're only telling, basically you're repeating the governor's story. If you look at our entire tax packet, it's something that we feel we can stand behind and many people will stand behind because we're targeting the resources towards working men and women. We also know that we in, when we invest in people who are here, they can grow their businesses. Again, there are many states that have no income taxes. There's 19 more that are having this conversation right now. I think after this is all said and done, young entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, young families are going to start looking at every state and how are they funding their education? How are their roads and bridges? How are they staying competitive, not just on one isolated tax, but on the whole package? And I think that Maine is, under this plan, will be in a better position to not only keep the businesses here, but also attract others. I mean, again, when you, when you start looking at rankings and why businesses move to a place or not, yes, taxes are part of it, but number one is always the workforce. And you know what, I think by our investment in K through 12, our investment in pre-K, our investment in higher ed, that's going to sustain and attract new businesses to the state of Maine. Hello, as the speaker said, if this is kind of an opening gambit, now we're going to get into negotiations. What's non-negotiable, or is anything non-negotiable? Well, we feel really strongly that it does have to be paid for, that if there's a tax cut, the middle class should get one, and should get that get the focus of that. Um, so I think that there are a number of things that we agree on. Just like when the governor proposed his plan, our initial response to that was there's some things we like, there's some things we reject, and this is a counter proposal to kind of outline that and really uh, uh, solidify that. I think really, just as much as the details of this, it really demonstrates who do you stand for and with. You stand with a proposal that gives 50% of the income tax break to the top 10%, <coughs> Or do you stand with the plan and the people that would benefit from 98% of the income tax relief? And it's, the choice is very clear to us because we think it's the right thing to do and we believe that it is the right approach to growing our economy as well. So as much as the details, I think it's the statement to the people of Maine of who we are standing for and with, and that is working class folks that get up every day and go to work and try to do right by their families, pay their bills, save for college, and maybe go on a family vacation. And how much of this is, is no offense, a, a, uh, a nod to the base of your party as opposed to proposals that you seriously believe 
you can get Republicans to buy in on? Well, uh, that's, a, that's a great question because uh, both Democrats and Republicans have already come out uh, in support of some of the governor's proposals, but also rejecting big parts of his proposals. If you look at the tax committee's report, what did they do? Nonprofit tax, gone. Mm -hmm. Revenue sharing, his plan to eliminate it, gone. So there's already some consensus between the two parties, and I think this plan, which is credi credible, which has been scored, which you know is paid for, we will we would put this plan up against the governor's every day of the week because it's targeting the right folks as far as where the taxes will go. And I, I don't think that this is, this is not some sort of uh, symbolic gesture. This is to get the people of Maine to understand where should our taxes go in the future, where should they be now, what should we be investing in, who should be getting the tax relief, and I think it's going to be a great conversation going forward in the legislature as it needs to be. In addition to tax reform, the governor and a lot of Republicans also want a tax cut. And you've said it over and over here, this is paid for. Does that mean that this plan is revenue neutral? And if so, I mean, to what degree are Democrats, if at all, willing to cut the overall tax reform? So the income tax is reduced. Again, for the bottom 95% of taxpayers, 98% uh, of the income tax relief goes to those folks. So there is an income tax. We provide $120 million in property tax relief. We provide $80 million towards revenue sharing. We provide an additional $20 million per year towards education. Uh, it's paid for, and there's roughly about $100 million left over to invest in the things that we think grow our economy. And does that additional money come from since you're not raising the income tax on anyone, correct? We're keeping current law. 7.95 correct. is current So you're not law. raising on anyone. Um, or is the additional money to do all these things coming from broad, just from broadening sales tax? Yeah, it's a series of things. I mean, I think you've, you're looking at, again, the income tax is, is changing. You're looking at the base broadening. Um, and other things that, um, you know, there's one thing around offshore tax havens, money comes in that way. So there's, there are various sources of revenue, uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, um, it's paid for. Uh, we believe that there is a certain amount of money left over to invest in, invest in our, in our seniors, invest in our roads, invest in education to make us at, as competitive as we need to be in this global marketplace. And so uh, we feel that uh, the better budget is something that uh, is going to get a lot of legs, not only in the legislature, but across Maine. When Mainers recognize, you know, the budget that the governor's proposed, who it benefits, and then our budget and who it benefits. And it's very clear. It's very clear cut. You said that you didn't want to be on the sidelines. The governor's been out there for three months now, yeah. on the road, talking about his plan. Why is it taking so long for the Democrats to come back to them? Well, what we really wanted to do, um, is make sure that the public weighed in, that our policy committees weighed in, that we had the information before we developed and implemented a plan. That's happened. The public has weighed in heavily on this. Uh, the policy committee just reported back this week, and now it's our, our opportunity to put out a plan that we feel grows, grows our economy, supports the middle class. We are going to be around the state talking to constituents and the public. Uh, we think this is certainly a debate we want to have. We think the public uh, would be appreciative of the fact that somebody's standing up and saying, what about me? What, did you? I, I want to pick up something you just said. Are you planning to uh, to go around the state talking about this plan in the same way the governor has done talking about his? We are going to give an opportunity to the people of Maine to weigh in on this plan. So we will be around the state having forums, uh, asking constituents to weigh in. Let us know what you think. Whether you feel like 50% of the tax cut should go to the top 10%, or if 98% of the tax cut should go to the bottom 95, and a variety of other things. But we are going to have a large public debate. It is going to be uh, the governor's proposal and our um, counter proposal that we think represents the middle class pretty well. Is this coming forward as a bill on its own? It, it is not. It is not a bill on its own. Uh, this is just going to be part of the negotiation process and appropriations and a big conversation with Maine people. I just want to back up to make sure I understand. I asked about, is this revenue neutral? Are you saying that this actually, overall, from a net perspective, increases taxes? So no. So what, what we're making sure that people understand is that the tax cut that is happening goes to the bottom 95%. So when we line up all the columns of all the revenue that comes in and goes out, and we adopt some of the governors and, and reject some of his, and we provide the middle class tax uh, income cut, and we 
provide property tax relief and we provide the $100 million of investment, um, that's how the dollars and cents shake out. Um, and we can make sure that folks such as yourself, Chris, and others have the detail of that to make sure that um, you can see the balance, uh, the, the balance at the bottom of the sheet. Okay, that's it. I think we're done. Is there any? No, there's another question, Jody. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So that hundred million is kind of like a pool of money it's because you may decide we can't get the votes for this particular part, so you may have to use that money in order to fund another part of the solution. That's kind of a what what has happened here is that we have prioritized certain things. We prioritize the middle class with our income taxes. We prioritize Maine people by not increasing the sales taxes. We prioritize all Maine homeowners with doubling the homestead exemption, not just seniors. We said everyone should get that homestead exemption. What we did is we didn't use all the dollars. We didn't use all the dollars. And some of those dollars are there for future investments. Those are investments in seniors, in roads and bridges, in our education. And we uh, will have those dollars, whether it's for those investments, whether it's for negotiations. But we all know this process is a long one. We, it's going to take you know, eight weeks, probably, until we finally have that budget. And uh, we will have this on the table. It's uh, something that we're really proud of. I think mean people are going to very clearly see who benefits when you stack both of these uh, plans up against each other. Eight weeks? Or so. <laughs> <laughs> Any last questions? Great. Well, thank you. Thank you all.